Wow. What a delectable medley of footballing splendour we have just witnessed. That is two nights on the spin that football has been truly exceptional, dazzling and glorious. Manchester United have won a must-win game. When you think of the form that Manchester United have been in, their worst in Premier League history, they have won a huge clash, a clash of the titans against Arsenal. It is massive, huge, humongous and the significance of today will live long. Now, I have to say this. Welcome to the madhouse, Ralph. Is Ralph going to wreck it? Because this is just huge this season. But before we get into the specifics of what happened and why it happened and what it means that it happened, I need to ask you a question. The question is this. Should Arsenal, having gone 1-0 up in the circumstances that they did, should Arsenal have allowed Manchester United to score a goal free of charge? In the way that Leeds United were implored by their manager, Marcelo Bielsa, to allow Aston Villa to score a goal free of charge. In the same spirit that Paolo Di Canio, whilst playing for West Ham United at Goodison Park, caught the ball, didn't score a goal when the opportunity was there in the spirit of fair play. Should Arsenal, who scored a goal in contentious circumstances, should Arsenal have allowed Manchester United to equalise? David De Gea was rendered out of action through an accidental collision with his own player. Fred accidentally did the Achilles. Anyone that's played football knows quite how painful that is. He did the Achilles, which meant that David De Gea was effectively out of action. Emil Smith-Rowe saw the opportunity. I think he must have deduced that De Gea was out of action because I don't think you shoot like that. You basically have no chance of scoring that sort of volley where all he's really done is hit the target. You know, no power, no real accuracy aside from hitting the target. Um, no desperation to, to fire it in, just hit the target. You don't shoot like that unless you realise that the goalkeeper is um, in jeopardy. Unless you realise that the goalkeeper isn't 100%, you don't make that shot. So he realised that there was an opportunity. I'm not judging Smith Rowe. I'm not even judging the situation. I'm merely asking the question. In my opinion, if you care, no. The game is about winning. Winning at all costs. Being winners, being true winners and doing what it takes to get over the line. I don't blame Arsenal. I don't blame Smith Rowe for taking that shot. And I think that they did the right thing. But as always, I am very interested to know your thoughts. So please do me the honour of commenting below. Let me know. So I'm going to be reading the comments a second this video goes live. Do you think that it was the responsibility of Arsenal to equalise the situation, knowing that they scored a fortuitous goal? Let me know. The significance of today, though, what a moment. Manchester United now moved to within three points of fourth place. It's going to get tight, isn't it? And when you think that the three teams in the Premier League, in no particular order, City, Liverpool, Chelsea, are all too good. So it leaves these two to compete for fourth spot. Who is going to make it? I do not know. Arteta will definitely feel like he should have got more out of today's game. They got victory there last year and it would have meant so much than the form that Manchester United are in. Playing against Carrick, I think that Arteta will feel like this is two points dropped and it was there for them. They started so well, Manchester United were appalling for the first 15 minutes, absolutely appalling. And I think after scoring the goal, Arsenal showed Manchester United too much respect. Look, it's very difficult. When Bruno Fernandes is as terrific as he is, it's very difficult. If Fred is going to have that sort of game, and despite contributing to the Arsenal week, uh, opening goal, Fred was magnificent, I thought, but inevitably, you know who we're going to talk about now. Anyone that watches this channel regularly knows how highly I rate Cristiano Ronaldo, don't they? And the inevitability of Cristiano Ronaldo scoring and making the difference again. Back in the starting lineup, bang, bang, two goals, team win the game, scores a winner. That is Cristiano Ronaldo. That is why he's so good. That is why he's so well loved. That is how good a footballer he is. And that is why if you do not rate him, you are clinically insane. If you do not understand the brilliance of Cristiano Ronaldo, if you try and come up with some hipster, odd version as to why Cristiano Ronaldo isn't right for Manchester United or why Cristiano Ronaldo is actually at the epicentre of the problems for Manchester United, you, my friend, are truly insane. People will say he did nothing apart from score the two goals. Yeah, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I probably agree it's true. But the geezer scored the two goals. The geezer scored the winner. The geezer scored his 800th and 801st goals for Club Country. 
can you? Like, 800 appearances as a footballer is impressive. Majorly impressive. 800 goals. And people want to, people want to ask whether he is a problem for this team. Cristiano Ronaldo is a genius. A genius. And Manchester United are so lucky to have him. And the inevitability of him is just um, unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. You know, he scored uh, twice for Manchester United against Arsenal in 04 05 when he was 19 years old. Remember those goals at Highbury? He scored twice when he was 19 against Arsenal and he scored twice against them at 36. This man will live forever in the pantheon of all time footballing greats. He is truly sensational and Manchester United are so lucky to have him. Um, got to give a special shout out as well, James Sancho, by the way. His move for, for the first goal, brilliant. But like I say, Cristiano Ronaldo is in the extreme, just truly sensational. Which now leads us on to talk about Arsenal. Now, I've been getting a little bit of grief from Arsenal fans. They didn't like the fact that I said uh, that the result that they had against Liverpool shocked me and has changed the way I feel. But I remember there was a time when um, Arsenal fans were telling Manchester United fans that Arteta was better than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, Arteta didn't get one over on Carrick today. You know, that's not good enough from Arteta. And I don't want to fall out of Arsenal fans at all. But what happened at Anfield shocked me. You know, they've been people were telling me, oh, they've, they've been two months unbeaten. Uh, and, they, and they've been playing so well since that defeat against Man City. But I've watched their games, Arsenal. And they were a Rizzler paper away from defeat against Brighton. And they were a Rizzler paper away from defeat against uh, Patrick Vieira's Crystal Palace. So that is why they were unbeaten for such a long time. Because they stole points, basically. They got two draws when they didn't deserve anything. That Lacazette one against, uh, against Palace when Vieira made a dodgy substitution. They, they got so lucky. So I looked beyond the stats and could see that there were frailties. Then Liverpool happened. And the way that they played in that game was just shockingly bad. Particularly when you consider that Arteta has had a long time with this team, putting his ethos into place, spent a lot of money and had no luck against the bigger teams. So I was I was shocked by that result and I got a lot of grief because of a debate that was had on the kickoff. I got a lot of grief from Arsenal fans saying that I've misjudged it or well, that's the politest thing they said. But today is another example of why it's just not working. Um, look, I'm not suggesting they should be too perturbed at, at points. They played well and... They responded admirably when they went 2-1 down. But ultimately, they lost an end-to-end -end game that could have gone either way. But they lost it. And that seems to be a little bit of a theme. Um, they seem to be riddled with errors. I mean, there's a lack of ruthlessness. And their recent progress, if you call it that, it's always stunted. So, I... I I expected more from Arsenal, and this were a very, this was a very winnable fixture for them. It was a very beatable Manchester United team. So yet again, Arsenal fall short, and like I say, not personal, but I did see this one coming. What a, what a couple of nights of football we have had, isn't it spectacular? I've loved it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do me the honour, click subscribe. Really helps me out. Give it a like. See you in a bit. What a game. Go easy, step lightly, stay free.